Okay, uh, thank you for introducing me. Uh, I'm Shin Seok So. Uh, I'm currently working for Safran Tech in France. So today I'm gonna talk about how we uh, exploit the benefits of a Jupyter Notebook and the uh, integrated developed environment like uh, PyCharm or VS Code at the same time in terms of uh, using a Python package. So these are the outline of this talk. I'm gonna skip briefly. So before we begin, uh, all the materials I deal with today are available here, and you can find this link to uh, in the in my talk description of EuroPython as well. And before we begin, I just wanted to know how many of you have uh, some experiences with the uh, Jupyter Notebook. Could you raise your hand? Oh, very good. And uh, how about IDE, like uh, PyCharm, VS Code? Yes, very nice. So I guess all of you have uh, some experience. So maybe I can briefly skip this introduction part because it just uh, tells about the benefits or advantages of Jupyter Notebook and the ID and some disadvantages. So I guess you already have uh, uh, felt this uh, lacking feature of Jupyter Notebook because it does not uh, fully support uh, properly debugging your code or code sharing, refactoring, version control, and advanced data editing, et cetera, et cetera, which we can find it from IDE, like uh, VS Code or PyCharm. So here, I'm gonna show you uh, a simple uh, data science workflow using Jupyter Notebook, and then uh, the way we transform it to a prop proper Python package so that we can maintain it using IDE and to have, to have the support from the IDE as a, a proper software development tool, right? So basic idea is uh, like this. So on the left side, we are using Jupyter Notebook. So we, do, we use this REPL uh, loop, uh, read, evaluation, um, print, and loop. So when we use Jupyter Notebook, uh, we write a code in a cell and evaluate the cell and we see the result right after, then we might want to repeat this process. That's, that's what we call RDPL. And thanks to this feature, we can uh, accelerate our um, coding as a prototyping or visualizations, experiments, documentation, etc. And on the right side, at the same time, we're gonna extract some common code for our work, your data science workflow as a function, class, or module, and then we're gonna maintain it in, in IDE uh, to have a better support for refactoring, unit testing, version controlling, and debugging. And here in the middle, you will see a uh, iteration loop because uh, this uh, left side, Jupyter Notebook and IDE, they are complementary. So on the left side, we do some pre prototyping visualization. Once it gets matured, we transfer the common code into a Python package, and then we maintain it as a, using IDE. And, and then the common code can also be used in the Jupyter Notebook, so this is a kind of an iterative process. So let's uh, move on to um, hands-on demonstration of a normal or user data science workflow. Today, the main purpose is not showing you how we do data science. Uh, I'm just uh, showing you the basic idea how we uh, use Jupyter Notebook for data science workflow and then how we transform it to a Python package. So here you can see that uh, we have uh, four different notebooks that deals with data loading, pre-processing, EDA, and prediction. EDA stands for uh, exploratory data analysis. So this is a kind of hands-on talk, so I'm gonna move on to my Jupyter Notebook. So all the notebook here, you can find it in my repository, which is this one, so under the notebook. So after this talk, if you wanna give it a try, you can clone this one and you can run the notebooks. So let's start from the first one. Let me increase the font size. 
Uh, today I'm gonna use this uh, adult data set, which is uh, about predicting whether the people's income exceeds 50K a year based on census data. And this one is also known as census, census income data set. Uh, the data set itself is not very important for today, but uh, it contains these different attributes like uh, age, work class, uh, final weight. I don't know what it means exactly, but uh, it says final weight, education, etc., etc. So when I look at the original data set, which is given as a CSV file, it looks like this. So we have uh, age, uh, work class, and uh, one line of uh, uh, this sys file contains uh, one information from one people, one person, sorry. And as you can see, those values are separated by comma. And then for loading this kind of data, uh, we have our best friend, pandas. So first we need to import pandas. Then we can use this uh, read csv function to load this data. And then we can check it. And when I look at the loaded data frame using pandas read CSV file, I realized that the column names are not very correct. So this is because uh, the given CSV file does not contain proper column names at the top. So we need to provide this kind of information explicitly uh, by defining this uh, list of column names and then provide it to a read CSV function, right? So if I do that, now we have a proper uh, column names as a data frame. So this is a kind of normal workflow when we are working with Jupyter Notebook. So we, at first, we try a very basic approach and then we check the result and then we find something is wrong, then we fix our code like this. Okay, and Later part is the, is the similar process. I'm just demonstrating the similar process. So I do some essential check with the uh, pandas data frame method like info to see the data type of each columns or to see some basic statistics uh, of uh, numerical columns and uh, uh, categorical or string columns. And then for instance, in the work class column, we have nine unique values. And among them, the private was the most frequent value. And I wanted to see the nine unique values as well to you by using this unique method. And here I realized that uh, the, there is a um, uh, initial space that does not uh, necessary to be transformed the proper value. And to remove this initial space, our very nice uh, read state function provides this argument, skip initial space, if I set it true, then we will have a, a properly loaded uh, data frame. So in, the, in this first loop, notebook, I demonstrated how to load the data properly uh, by using this uh, Jupyter Notebook's REPL uh, workflow. Once I have done that, uh, I, will, I would recommend some refactoring recommendations, sorry. So these are, uh, as a beginner, we, uh, when we work with the Jupyter Notebook, your code could, uh, is very easy to be messed, messed up. Uh, by, I mean, for instance, your code here uh, should be uh, executed uh, before the other next code, something like that. And then uh, later on, if you want to rerun this notebook, then you might uh, um, lose the proper workflow. So here, these are my um, basic, uh, uh, very simple Jupyter Notebook rec uh, refactoring recommendations. So first of all, uh, put import statement at first. So in this example, as a demonstration purpose, I didn't do that, but uh, I would put this kind of import statement at the top of your uh, notebook, and then uh, as I mentioned, uh, while we are working with Jupyter Notebook, uh, your cells, uh, the order of your cells can be uh, messed up. And then uh, after everything is uh, working or matured enough, I would uh, put every cells in order. 
and try to follow Pebay's style guide and try to sp split one big notebook into several ones by some logic. So in this example, I didn't put all the data science workflow into one notebook. I separate them into four different ones uh, by uh, functionality of a uh, or, or uh, my workflow logic, like uh, data loading, pre-processing, EDA, and prediction. And then uh, finally, I would extract repeated code to functions. For instance, in this example, uh, we're gonna use this data loading function, uh, data loading code, uh, many times for the later data science workflow. So I would uh, extract this as a function like this, and uh, and by doing so, I'm not just uh, do copy and paste our original code. Uh, I did some improvements. I'm not going to go into detail, but just uh, for instance, I extracted the data file location as an argument of this function so that if uh, an end user might want to uh, load a different data set with the same format, then we can change this uh, argument to a proper one. And if we don't do that, we're going to use the default one, something like this. You get the idea, right? And then let's move on to the second notebook, pre-processing. And here at the top, I import pandas, of course. And then uh, we have uh, defined a very nice function that works very well for loading our target data set. And to use that function in another notebook, normally you need to copy and paste that function. So here, that's what I did. And here we can see some you can see a drawback of Jupyter Notebook. Because this function, we're gonna use this function for the other following notebook as well, but um, every time you need to load the data, you need to copy and paste this function. So that's the idea of this talk today. So we're gonna extract this, uh, this kind of common functionality into a package, and then we don't need to do this anymore. And the other drawback of doing this is that for instance, if we, if we want to change the column name here, like uh, FNL weight, then uh, we need to modify the other function in here in other notebook as well uh, to, to have a consistent uh, functionality. And if we extract these uh, common things into a package, then you don't have to do that. You just need to modify one package, one code. Right. So here I loaded the data, and then after loading the data, uh, we see, we check the data has been loaded properly, and then uh, I, will, I will do some pre-processing. The main purpose of this talk is not showing you how to do a proper pre-processing. I'm just to uh, skip this part. The idea is that uh, for the pre-processing part as, as well, this kind of a uh, code we're gonna use uh, in later for real, uh, real uh, data science workflow like predicting. So we, we're gonna also extract our uh, pre-processing functionality code into a function. And then we'll transform it, transfer it to uh, uh, our package later in the second part of this talk. So here uh, I dealt with uh, data loading, pre-processing, and then uh, EDA. EDA represents exploratory data analysis. And basically this is uh, uh, to have a better understanding on the data set uh, with the help of uh, statistical visualizations. And by the way, I gave a tutorial in PyData Py 2020 about this topic. And uh, if, you are, if you want to have a detailed uh, um, information about that, you can go to this uh, repository and have a look. So uh, as I told you, EDA is uh, about uh, having a statistical visualizations to do so we need to import another library like uh, matplotlib or seaborn. Again, uh, to visualize our data set, 
we need to load the data and apply the pre-processing that we have defined in the first notebook and second notebook. For that, we, I'm just demonstrating the same thing again and again. We need to copy and paste the, the function here in this notebook and then apply pre-processing as well and it's ready. Now we, we can have a, a proper visualization like this. I'm not gonna go into detail, but uh, here, uh, for instance, I, I'm checking the differences between two groups uh, separated by income, whether it's uh, over 50K or not. And here I'm comparing the age by income. Uh, so here, this is this histogram, uh, corner density, sorry, corner density estimation and box plot. And I defined this code against age, but what if I want to see the same thing on other variable? Then I need to change these three different lines. I don't wanna do that. So I would extract this kind of uh, function, uh, common code into a function like this. So basically, I just uh, substitute, substitute, sorry, substituted uh, this age with a variable, and I extracted it as an argument of this function. From now on, I can just uh, call this function uh, by giving uh, the variable name. Okay. So this kind of uh, EDA function can be also a good candidate for transferring into uh, your package. And finally, uh, we had a better understanding on our data set. We have a proper data loading function, pre-processing function. And then and our final target is to have a proper prediction on the data set. So at the top, I import pandas and I copy and paste data loading function, load the data, and then I apply pre-processing. Uh, are you familiar with uh, this kind of a uh, data science workflow? How many of you know this kind of thing? Okay, very good. <laughs> and for data science, as you might know, we need to do some feature engineering. Here I'm just using uh, one hot encoder for categorical, categorical variables. So X features are looking like this and our target is income, whether, is, uh, whether income is uh, over 50K or not. And then we import our uh, nice friend, Cyclone's random forest classifier and then we split the data set into train and test, and then inst instantiate the random forest classifier, train the model, get the prediction against the test data set, and then compute the accuracy, which is 80%, which is not that bad, it looks okay, but uh, it's not our final model, we might want to improve our model uh, to, de to do so, uh, we might want to apply other feature engineering. We might want to use other models like uh, XGBoost, uh, Software Vector Machine, CatBoost, etc. Or we might want to try different cross validation uh, strategies, hyperparameter tuning, etc., etc. And we might not want to do this. We might not want to um, follow this process copy and paste our data loading pre-processing functions every time we, we wanna try these different combinations. And fortunately, we can turn our common functions into a proper Python package. Let's go back to my slides. Sorry. So, uh, before we transfer our nice common functions into a package. What is a Python package? Uh, the definition of a Python package is quite simple. It's uh, any directory with an init.py file. Uh, this is a minimal requirement to be a proper Python package. And a package can contain modules, Python files, 
or sub package, sub directories with the init.py file. And uh, Python package, we can say that it is a, a collection of modules. And why do we want to use Python package? Because it makes it easy to reuse and share code. I think this is the most important concept, at least for my talk. And, uh, and by, using, by using Python package, it also makes it easy to install with pip or easy install, or, or it makes it easy to specify as a dependency for another package or uh, it make it easy for other users to download and run test or to add the and distribute documentation. And to create a minimal package, uh, I would say we just need to follow these three steps. First of all, you need to pick a proper package name like uh, pandas or numpy. Uh, the package name should be all lowercase and if uh, your package name contains several words, and they should be separated by underscore. In our example, I'm gonna use adult data analysis as a package name, which is not so great, but uh, this is an example. And this is first step. And second step, you create a package root directory that might contain readme.md file or pyproject.toml file. By the way, uh, uh, this morning, the of this session, the first talk was about uh, uh, Python package um, management tools. So it was a very nice talk. So if you're interested in, you can have a look. The, I think the slides are available in Discord. And then finally, we create a package source directory uh, like this, source package name. And then under there, we create the init.py file and uh, add Python module files and put your code. Uh, and in terms of uh, this uh, source directory layout, we have source layout and flat layout. Uh, if you are interested in, you can go have a look in this uh, uh, link. And let me show you uh, how I created the package. Uh, in, in using v VS Code. So this is my package directory structure. So here, this is my root directory. Normally, your root directory name uh, have the, has the same name to, the, to your package name, but uh, in my example, uh, it was uh, in the purpose of uh, this talk, so I have a different name, but here I have a readme.md file and pyproject.toml file. And here I have a source and package name directory. And then I, there I created a init.py file. And I created those three different modules that were uh, transferred from the Jupyter notebook. So for instance, if I go this module, data loading module, I copy and pasted the load data function that we have just defined in uh, in our first Jupyter notebook. I put it here as a module, uh, as a function of this module. And in the pre-processing module, I had these two different uh, pre-processing functions. And in visualization module, I have this uh, visualization function. And then uh, to facilitate the access, access from uh, package namespace, I imported those modules, uh, the functions in those uh, some modules in this init.py file, okay? And then what we have defined Python package, and then uh, we might want to use it, uh, use the package in Jupyter Notebook. And for that, we have two different options. I prefer the second option. The first option is adding your local path like this, import sys, syspath append, that, uh, and your package source directory. And then now we are ready to import our package in this way. And this is quite simple, but as you can see, the path is relative to the notebook path. And we have to add the two lines of code in each notebook you, that, you might want to use, that you want to use this package. 
And this is not an usual way of importing package by adding the source. So I prefer the second option, which is installing the package using pip. And um, for that, we need to add a package metadata file. Previously, we, we were using setup.py file or the combination of setup.py and setup.cfg. But uh, recently, the Py project tomer file is the, is the standard. Start, starting with the pep 621, the Python committed, selected uh, this approach as a standard way. So in this talk, I'm following this uh, approach. And then once we added or defined a package metadata file, then we can install our package using just pip, uh, like uh, installing the normal packages. Then we can just import it. So this is the example of a pi project toml file. So at the top, we define a target build system which is setup tools in this example, and setup tools is a kind of a de facto standard for building Python package. So I don't, I didn't want to use, uh, change this part, but uh, if you want to use another build system, you can do, uh, do so as you like. And here uh, we define some package metadata like uh, name, version, authors, etc., etc. So I added this uh, pi project toml file. Now we are ready to uh, install our package. And then uh, the next issue is uh, dynamic updates of a package. So when we install our package, then uh, we might want to change the package and use it the Jupyter notebook on the fly. And to make it um, very smooth and dynamic, we, we need to add these two things. So we, we need to use Jupyter Notebook's auto reroute magic command like this. And then um, pip supports two different way to install a package, static installation and editable installation. Uh, in, in my case, in our case, for dynamic updates of a package, we're gonna use pip install editable. So we're gonna check it uh, using the final notebook. So here, let, let me first show you the the way how how we how this uh, static installation is not proper for dynamic updates of our code or package. So first, let me try to install our package in a static way. So I do this pip install that. So I'm installing uh, our other data analysis package using pip on this environment. Now, uh, I think I need to restart my corner. Now, without adding the, the path uh, explicitly, we can import our package this way, and then we can use the package function like uh, loading the, load the data in this way. So here, this function is uh, provided by this package here, I'm using this load data function, right? And for some reason, I wanted to change the column name, FNL weight to uh, FNL weight with the underscore to better readability. Let's try to move it on the, uh, uh, modify it on the fly. So I just modified this uh, function in our package. Let's check it uh, if this modification has been applied or not. So here you can see a panel weight did not change, right? But our code has been changed. So to make it uh, applicable dynamically, uh, as I told you in the slide, we need to apply these two uh, tricks um, by using auto reload of a Jupyter notebook command, sorry, magic command, and install the package in an editable mode. Okay, so let's now, uh, 
remove our package from PID and uh, reinstall it in a editor mode. Sorry. And then to make it editable, we can use dash dash editable or just uh, insert dash e dot dash e. So now I'm, now I'm installing our package in an editable mode. Okay, it's done. After the reinstallation, I need to restart the kernel. And then I execute this uh, uh, Jupyter Notebooks auto reload uh, magic command. Now I can import the package. So here, this is because we just uh, restarted kernel. So our package modification has been applied. Let's try to revert it back to the original one and see if this uh, applies on the fly. So I have saved it. Now if I run this part, so uh, our uh, column name has been changed dynamically. If you don't believe me, let me do it once again. So now our code modification in the package has been applied to our Jupyter Notebook directly, dynamically. Okay, very cool. So here in this talk, the key point is uh, uh, once your Jupyter Notebook is matured enough, extract your code as a function and then transfer it to a proper Python package, then use auto reload uh, and uh, install the package in an editor mode editable mode to exploit the best of both worlds by iterating this, this part. And uh, I wanted to give you a live example of uh, improving the package, but uh, I don't think we don't have enough time. Five minutes, okay. Uh, I have two examples, but uh, I'm gonna show you just the first example. And then if you have any question, then uh, you can come to me during the lunch time or break time, okay? So here, um, our data loading function just do the data loading. But uh, in most of the cases, you might want to apply pre-processing while loading your data. So here, uh, we are trying to um, uh, uh, load the data and do the pre-processing at the same time. Okay, so here uh, I didn't modify our package and I'm gonna go back to my IDE and here I, I will try to uh, introduce another parameter like uh, pre-processing with the default value to true. And then Let's try to, uh, if pre-processing. And here, you can see by using this ID, we have a proper, a better um, code completion. And uh, for instance, if I made an error like this, and you will give me a hint, there is something wrong. So by using this approach, we have a full support with the IDE, or we, we can have a uh, automatic, uh, let's say automatic code formatting that rely on the black. So if I do something like this, and if I save my file, you see, uh, my code format is uh, automatically uh, aligned to the PEP8 because I set my VS code to run black when, every time I save the file, okay? 
So now we have introduced the pre-processing argument, and if it's true, we're gonna print pre-processed. So here, if I load the data, and the pre-processed uh, has been printed out, and if I set to force that part, uh, sorry, Processing, sorry. Then uh, there's no more pre-processing. And here we we just printed out. We might want to do the real job. So here we're gonna import pre-processing functions. Yes, so you see uh, we have a better support from the ID for code completion, type hinting, et cetera, et cetera. Um, So here uh, I modified our data loading function. When pre-processing is true, I apply pre-processing. If not, I just return the loaded data. Let's check it. So uh, yeah, when I say pre-processing force, uh, I don't see the age group. And if I set it true, then we see age group. So we can, uh, we can do this kind of process iteratively. I do uh, coding on package using IDE, and I check the result using Jupyter Notebook. Nice. Okay, let me finish my talk. So as you can see, we can take full advantage of uh, Jupyter Notebook and IDE by using Python package. Uh, I think this will boost your productivity, so give it a try. And uh, next, as a next step, you might want to publish your package. Uh, please check this uh, link for uh, as a starting point. And PyScaport is a good tool for bootstrapping your uh, Python package. And as you can see, VS Code is very nice. I recommend you to give it a try. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you for an amazing talk. So now we have time for questions. If someone uh, has a question, please come to the microphone uh, and you can ask them. Or in case if uh, someone will come, come up with a question later, you can always uh, ask it on the Discord and speaker, I believe, will answer it. Yes, on the Discord or uh, in the open space. So well, if nobody has any questions, so I think we'll... We can thank again our speaker, and uh, that's, that's it. Thank you.